uh, greetings to you all. We've reached Psalm 48 today. And interwoven, interwoven throughout Psalm 48 is a connection. The city of God and the God of the city. The Psalms we find him in this Psalm is extolling the virtues of Jerusalem, telling everyone how beautiful the city is and how secure a fortress she is against her enemies. How Jerusalem is the joy of the whole earth. And he's telling us why. Because God is within her. A powerful and eternal God whose praise reaches to the ends of the earth. So let's read it. Let's read Psalm 48. This is God's word. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth. Like the heights of Zaphon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her, ch er, God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to her fortress. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there, pain like that of a woman in labor. You destroyed them like the ships of Tarshish, shattered by an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God, God makes her secure forever. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion. Go around her. Count her towers. Consider well her ramparts. View her citadels that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. Amen. Mount Zion is the hill on which Jerusalem is built and where the temple of God stood. It is the place where God chose to be the defining point of his presence with and among Old Testament Israel. So where is this, where in this New Testament era is the defining point of his presence today? Well, it's the church. Jerusalem of then is the church of today. Read Galatians 4, Hebrews 12, Philippians 3 are just some of the passages that teach this point. The church is the new Jerusalem. Revelation 21 tells us that when fully prepared will descend from heaven to be the believer's eternal dwelling place in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so Psalm 48 is a rich and wonderful portrayal of how God Almighty dwells and will continue to dwell from generation to generation with his people, the church. The church, like the city of Jerusalem, will be attacked, but God will defend her. Verse 4, when the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. And that's true of the church. For 2,000 years, the church has been persecuted. Uh, nations and ideologies have tried to stamp her out, but, but nothing has succeeded. Why? Because God is within her. God makes her secure forever, as verse 8 tells us. And Jesus promised his followers, uh, those who would be leaders in the early church, a church that would suffer much persecution. He said in Matthew 18 or 16, he says, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Now as I write this, uh, churches are not meeting, not in the usual way anyway, but they have found ways to meet nevertheless. All over the country, all over the world, prayer meetings are happening online. Sermons are being written, recorded, and then uploaded to social media, and they've been listened to not only by faithful churchgoers, but by people who would not normally come to church to hear a sermon or to worship God. How is that even possible? Why is this happening today? It's because God is within his church. He is with his church. And his kingdom through his church, which is a, an immovable force on an unstoppable course, is being proclaimed. And the lordship of Jesus Christ is being established. 
as the writer of this psalm says in his closing words, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. We serve a God within a church who cannot be defeated. Let's pray. As we have heard, so we have seen in the church of the Lord Almighty, your beauty, your glory, your majesty is just awesome. Father, we thank you for being faithful to your people from generation to generation. We thank you for protecting us, providing for us, for every blessing that we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, Lord, your name, uh, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. We rejoice in you and we thank you, Lord, that we are part of your church. Amen.